you are Locked On Giants Postcast, part of Locked On Sports Bay Area on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Yo, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Locked On Giants Postcast. I am your host, Eric Triple E Ingle. You may know me as the former producer for the Murph and Mac show on KMBR. And tonight, the San Francisco Giants got worked by the Arizona Diamondbacks falling 17 to 1 at Oracle Park. This is not good, folks. This is not good. This sucks. The worst loss of this young season. They seem to regress. Like, I mean, just to regress like this one, one day, one day after they played their most complete game of the season. This sucks. But yet, it's still early. I'm frustrated. You're frustrated. I think that's justified. We all are, but we can't write this team off just yet. We'll break it all down. The good, the bad, and the ugly all from tonight. It wasn't much good, but we'll break down the bad and the ugly. Uh, but first, I want to thank all of you for watching us on the Locked On Sports Bay Area YouTube channel. If you aren't already subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. Thanks also for listening on the Locked On Giants podcast feed. However you're getting the show, we appreciate you tuning in. And make sure to check out the Locked On Giants daily show for more in-depth coverage. Ben Kaspik does a great job. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Usually we go through games, you know, I, I usually use my first segment on this show to talk, you know, just kind of rehash some key moments from the game. I really don't want to do that tonight, man. Like, I'm sorry. I really don't want to do that. Do I don't think you guys want me to go run by run through this 17 run slaughter that the Diamondbacks just laid on the Giants 17 to one. But there was some positive things. So, I, I mean, obviously you're going to you're going to not have a whole lot of good things after a 17 to 1 win to talk about but I do think that there were a few positive things for the Giants Blake Snell not looking like himself yet understandable he missed all of spring training this is his third start he lasted longer in this game than he has in any any prior game first time he saw the 5th inning this year he did give up 5 runs on 9 hits a walk and 3 strikeouts but you know, this kind of feels like a spring start. This this is something that you would see from one of your starters in the middle of, you know, beginning of March, middle of March, and you'd say, eh, whatever. You know, you just kind of throw your hands up and say, well, he'll figure it out once the season gets rolling. And that's about where you have to be at with Blake Snell right now. He is not ready to pitch in, in competitive major league games. He's just not. He's not built up enough. And this is what's frustrating when you think about how the current baseball free agency works like the current system is flawed and broken you have Blake Snell out there floundering absolutely floundering because he doesn't have any way to get acclimated with this new team doesn't have anything to to build on he's he's throwing bullpens yeah but it's way different than actually having simulated games being with your guys in the clubhouse it's hard to adjust when when you come back to baseball basically at the start of a season, you can't just come in cold like that. It doesn't work. And I think, you know, the Scott Boris mentality was trying to trying to get these one year deals done and then get max value for your guys. Just get the biggest possible contract. But when you're holding guys out this long, it starts to starts to bite you in the butt. You know, like you're trying to showcase your best player and they can't do that. They can't. These players can't showcase themselves if they are not able to have a proper ramp up time to the regular season. And granted Blake Snell does have slow starts every year. His April does not look good. Bob Melvin talked about it in the pregame today. He said he is not worried about Blake Snell at all. And once he gets a good game or two under his belt, we will all see what the rest of the world saw last year from Blake Snell. And I believe Bo Mel, I really do. It, you got to give, starting pitchers especially a long time to ramp up especially starting pitchers that don't have a spring training now i know it's frustrating i get it believe me because on the other side of the hill tonight you have jordan montgomery who was in the same exact boat as blake snell was this offseason 
didn't have a long ramp up time, didn't have a spring training. This was his first start, his first start of the season with the Diamondbacks. And he looked like he picked up just where he left off last year. I mean, Montgomery was dealing out there, held the Giants to just one run over six innings of work, four hits and three strikeouts. He did give up the solo bomb to, to Soler. You do. That's another bright spot from tonight. You know, you enjoyed the Soler home run. At least I did seeing Soler get back to that type of swing is good. I mean, that was a low and inside pitch. It was a tough one to hit out of the park. He went down and golfed it out, hugged that left field foul pole and put it right into that tunnel just beyond the left field fence. And we got to see the light show in full effect. Finally, first home run at Oracle Park. It only took what? What is this? April 18th? Oh my God. Almost took a month. 19th. My bad. April 19th. Almost took a whole month for the Giants to, to hit their first bomb at Oracle. We see the light show Glad we got, you know, we got that one out of the way. Now let's go get some more. And hopefully there won't be so much pressure on these guys to finally hit one out at Oracle. But this game was well out of reach by the time that Solaire uh, hit that shot because Diamondbacks were already up to nothing. Giants couldn't score more than that one run. So it didn't really matter. It, that was in the bottom of the fourth inning. Uh, it actually, that light show, random note, but that light show actually kind of reminded me of a lot of different stadiums that you see throughout baseball. But I went to a Colorado Rockies game out of Coors Field a couple of years ago. And Coors Field did relatively the same thing. And it really took me by surprise when I was out there in the stadium and I saw the light show. It was kind of nuts. So it, it's a good vibe. It's fun. Um, not Coors Field, but the light show at Oracle Park. Cor Coors Field is actually kind of okay for being a house of horrors for the Giants on the field. It's actually a pretty decent place to go watch a baseball game. I mean, it, it's, it's fun out there. But, you know, not fun when you're losing 17 to 1 to the Diamondbacks. And... This is, believe it or not, the not the most runs that they have surrendered uh, to a team at Oracle Park. They actually gave up 18 runs to the Diamondbacks also uh, in 2019, in May of 2019. So it's not the worst loss that they've ever had at Oracle, but this is very close to being a record number of runs that the Giants gave up at Oracle Park in its 24-year history. This was not a good day. The Giants bullpen shelled for 10 runs in the end of this one and that's been a bright spot for this team as of late we've been talking a lot about this bullpen how they've been pretty solid lately all these young guys have shown a lot of signs and today roop did not look good i mean tang didn't look good either uh i mean the, all everybody who we saw from the bullpen today just not didn't have it nobody did it, it was a tough night for the giants out there uh, you, you had Jung Hu Lee having a day off. Yaz had a day off as well. Orange Friday vibes were in full effect, but apparently vibes aren't enough to get a win. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, the the crowd, it seemed pretty full out there tonight. It seemed like people were into it. it the bleachers looked packed, but it just wasn't enough for the Giants to get anything rolling on offense. And that has been a theme all season long. It is frustrating giants baseball is back to being torture in our lives something that none of us want absolutely none of us want and if you guys missed this one i don't blame you this one's on this one was on apple tv tonight and i just i i gotta say this is one of the worst things that baseball has done is putting these games on apple tv and i kind of i don't i'm not gonna say i like the apple tv broadcast because there's so many parts of it that are frustrating, like the fact that you've got to go to a completely separate streaming service than anything else. Like, I only have Apple TV just so I can watch these Friday night baseball games and Ted Lasso, because who doesn't love Ted Lasso? But I'm not trying to pay 10 bucks a month to watch like 12 baseball games throughout the, the year. That's not, it's not, it's not what I want to do. It's not what I want to be spending my money on. But I got to get my Giants baseball. So, of course, I'm going to pay for the damn product. But it's it's annoying, man. The one good thing I did like about there's actually two things I like about Apple TV. One, their camera quality is so good. The actual visual product you get of the game is crisp, man. Like you can see like each individual blade of grass, each speck of dirt. It's it's fun to to have that great, that clean of of a shot. It, it you can see the seams on the baseball. I feel like you can see the spin on it when the guy when the pitcher's delivering to the plate. It's it's a good visual product. The broadcast team leaves something to be desired, and I like D Train. Don't don't get me wrong. I, I I'm a big Dontrell Willis fan, but I do also like that if you don't want to listen to their 
national broadcast, which I think needs some work, <laughs> you can turn on the local feed, the local radio feed. So you can actually sync up the KMBR feed to your Apple TV feed. And, and there's an option to do that in the sound settings. You can uh, you can choose which feed you want to do. So I don't, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this, but make sure you're turning on that KMBR feed so you can get the sweet sounds of John Miller and, and Dave Fleming instead of whatever garbage Apple TV is putting on there for their national broadcast. It, but it's so frustrating that this is this is not going to make the game more accessible to people. This is gatekeeping baseball. This doesn't add anything to it. I mean, other than, I guess, a couple revenue bucks. But do you really need that in today's game? Like, TV contracts are so huge. You have so many options for national broadcast games. Why are we doing it on a network where most people, most baseball fans, I would say, probably don't even have Apple TV. So you're forcing people to go back to things like the radio or or illegal streaming services, honestly, to, to get these things. And that's not good. You don't want baseball heading in that direction. It's frustrating. So if you guys missed it on, on, on TV because you don't have Apple TV, I am sorry. That is a terrible decision by baseball. By Major League Baseball, it's they started going down this path a couple of years ago, and I don't think they're going to stop anytime soon, unfortunately. So if you're bummed you missed out on your Giants tonight, I, I feel you, man. I feel you, but you didn't really miss all that much as the Giants got spanked 17-1 to by the Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks only hit one bomb in this one, and I, we, we got to talk about uh, one guy on the Diamondbacks who, who really did a lot of damage, Blaze Alexander. Yeah, that's right, Blaze Alexander. In his five ABs, he had three hits, five RBIs. He almost had two bombs. He had a he had a double off the wall earlier in this one. That I mean, like, it was as well as you could hit a ball at Oracle without hitting a home run. That was as close to a home run as you can get without actually hitting a home run as it hit off the top of the wall and bounced back into play. But it's, I think it's kind of fitting. You know, you got a guy named Blaze playing in San Francisco the day before April 20th. I think that that's all, you know, if you, if you read those tea leaves and you said, I'm putting some money on Blaze to, to, you know, have, have a couple RBIs in this one, then good for you because I should have been reading those tea leaves too. I am a 420ist myself. I think that we all missed. A golden opportunity here. Obviously, a guy named Blaze the day before 420 in San Francisco is going to go off. Of course he is, because tomorrow he's got better things to do, if you know what I mean. So Blaze Alexander is the hero for the Arizona Diamondbacks in this one. The Arizona Diamondbacks had a lot of heroes in this one, as almost every single player who started for them picked up a hit tonight. It, it was actually every single player who started for the Diamondbacks did pick up a hit. I Wow. The only players who didn't pick up a hit for the Diamondbacks were pinch hitters. And uh, it, it, <laughs> it this is a tough loss, tough loss for the Giants tonight, especially after how great they looked last night and how complete of a game they played, how good the bullpen was, how productive the Giants were on offense. And this wasn't a, a game where the Giants just left a ton of guys on and in scoring position. I mean, they did they did leave uh, a couple runners on. They left six on base, 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position. But it, it, even if they scored all those runs, it wouldn't have mattered. They still would have lost. The, the bullpen sold this one. Blake Snell didn't have it today. You move on. As uh, as the great Brian Murphy says, next pitch. Got to gotta focus on the next game. Got a game tomorrow. And, and they need a win. You need a win. You need to go back out there. You can't go down two games to one in this series. If you're looking for positives, as we always are, the Dodgers lost again. They have not been playing very well as of late. The Dodgers have dropped five of their last seven and now just 12 and 10 on the season. So the NL West stays relatively compacted. The Giants are now three games back of the Dodgers in the NL West. But it's April. It's very early. This is not an insurmountable lead. To, to, ke to catch up in the division by any means. And as long as the Giants stay relatively close in the division, that's what matters right now. It, it doesn't matter necessarily if you win or lose each individual game in April. No one's going to remember, well, you might remember this one, but no one's going to remember a, a random like five to four loss in April. You might remember the 17 to one loss. This is very frustrating. I will definitely be remembering this loss later on in the season, but you move on. It's one loss. It all counts the same. Doesn't matter if you lose by one run or 30. It counts as one loss. 
Hopefully the Diamondbacks got it all out of their system. Hopefully the Giants got every single bad pitch out of the bullpen done with and over for this series. And they can go back out there tomorrow. Harrison taking the hill and they can get back in the win column. We got to take a quick break. More on the other side. Stick with us on the Locked on Giants postcast. I'm your host, Eric Triple E Ingle. We will be right back. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Welcome back to the Locked On Giants postcast. I am your host, Eric Triple E Ingle. Tonight, the Giants just get smacked, spanked, stomped, worked, whatever word you want to use by the Diamondbacks, 17 to 1. And it's frustrating, man. Snell's start has to the season has left something to be desired. I think that's expected. If you followed Blake Snell's career, you know that that's going to happen. The one thing that we I don't think we expected was this offense to be seemingly just as lethargic as it was last season the giants have yet to score more than four consecutive runs in a game since their opening series against the padres their offense looked nice in 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 that series it looked like we were going to see some production at the plate which was would be very different than what we've seen the last few years for the giants uh, they did have that crazy year uh, when they won the franchise record number of games 100 plus wins and, and you had all sorts of guys like, you know, Brandon Belt hit 29 bombs and you got like Donovan Solano hitting hitting home runs left and right. And you they did it. Everybody on that team overachieved at the plate that year. Every single player on the Giants overachieved at the dish. Right now, it feels like the exact opposite. Every single Giant is underachieving at the plate right now. I mean, you look at you look at all these free agent additions and Solaire starting to get back in a rhythm. Chapman barely keeping his batting ravage over 200 and, and you know murphy they brought him in for the for his offense it hasn't been there dude's batting under 100 on the season another offer with a golden sombrero three k's tonight for murphy and austin slater batting lead off when when lee gets a rest is not what we want man like another offer for slater he did draw a walk in this one his Batting average is also below 100. You cannot have a guy batting leadoff that can't get on base. It's so frustrating, man. Watching this team at the plate is gonna is giving me agita. Like my my, I got like chest pains watching this team. It, it is frustrating. And tonight we, I think we expected a little bit less at the plate. You know, you had a lot of a lot of bench guys playing, but for them to be able to not like it didn't after they went down after Snell came out in this one and Snell gave up those those five runs, it, it felt like that was an insurmountable lead. And the Giants were only down four. That's not a good sign. In today's in today's baseball, you you got to be able to score runs. This isn't the 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 early two thousands or nineties when when teams are winning three to one, three to two, two to one, two to zero like that. Does that rarely happens in baseball now? Way more often are you seeing like five to three or like nine to four or or eight to three or seven to one scores like that. I'm reading scores from tonight. Almost every single score that I'm looking across Major League Baseball tonight, someone has more than five runs. And the Giants can't do that. They cannot string together effective nights at the dish. I it's 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 frustrating it's it's really frustrating because this is supposed to be the part of the team that in early season baseball you can sort of rely on your hitting your hitting gets up to speed before your pitching usually does and for the Giants it seemed like it, it's just a crapshoot total crapshoot day to day thankfully they were able to get Logan Webb some run support on the mound last night but it seems like every time that they go and and put a crooked number up on the scoreboard they just come out the next day completely out of runs it's like the it's like they're picking up the bat and going there are no more hits left in this one and you get some new bats it's in in, in when you're giving up 17 runs you're not going to win a lot of games 
gave up 22 hits to the Diamondbacks. They scored a run in every single inning, at least one, except for three innings tonight, the first, the second, and the sixth. If you're scoring in every inning, you're going to score a lot in Major League Baseball, and you're going to win a lot of games that way. Now, Blake Snell, I'm not super concerned about still. The bullpen is up and down. It will continue to improve. Snell's advanced metrics don't look terrible. They they look okay. His his XERA and his, his expected batting average both a little higher than than they were in years past. But everything else looks more or less the same with Snell. I think that he's just missing on some of his locations. You, you see him hanging some some curveballs sometimes. Uh, they're not really it's not locating as well as he normally does. It's gonna get better. We just got to give him some time. You cannot judge a guy like this who didn't have a spring i think i think until memorial day and we keep saying that same date but it's true baseball's a long season it's a marathon not a sprint and you gotta you gotta taper your expectations as such if you can't overreact to one game it's uh, trust me it's frustrating as hell especially when you're if, if you're devoting the time to to watch this team to cheer for this team to go out to the yard you're investing your money in this team like you're you're buying jerseys you're buying hats you're buying tickets you're going to the game you're buying garlic fries you're buying 16 dollar beers it's you want to have something to show for it on the field and the giants right now are so inconsistent that some nights it feels like you don't have you don't have that and in all I can say right now is hang on. It's going to get better. We can't rush to a decision about what this team is right now in April. I mean, if you want to jump off the bandwagon in April, I feel like you probably aren't someone who sticks on the bandwagon for a whole 162 anyways. So if you're already out on the giants, maybe, maybe go, go watch some basketball or go watch some football where they have some shorter seasons and you can make these judgment calls earlier in the season than you can in major league baseball, but calm down. If you're, if you're sitting there ready to throw a shoe through the TV or your remote through the TV or your phone through the TV or, or the kid through the TV, don't, don't put, put the kid down. Don't, don't do it. Take a deep breath, you know, and imbibe in some four twentieth activities. Chill out. We will be fine. The giants will get back to their winning ways again. I think they really need to reach 500 by the end of this home home stand. Like you need to be, if you finish this, this home stand over 500, I think that that's a successful home stand. If the giants can be even one game over 500 by the end of this home stand, I'm taking that as a win. They need to figure out how to start hitting though in multiple games, not just one offs where you run into a few, like you got to figure out a way to scratch runs across the board every single game and they've been much better at that lately they've been getting a lot more base runners on being aggressive not running into outs though while still maintaining their aggressiveness on the base paths today they didn't get a lot of base runners didn't get a lot of hits it it didn't work out for the giants only four hits in this one the one run the other guy hits hits the ball 22 times and you hit it four you're not going to win that much you're not going to win that much Stick with us on the Locked on Giants postcast. A couple more things to break down before we get on out of here. We will be right back. I'm your host, Eric Triple E Ingle. Stick with us on the other side. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Spring training is over. Baseball season is officially underway. Don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your Prize Picks entries. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, Take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize picks entry today. Prize picks has something for every sports fan from baseball and basketball to league of legends and everything in between. You can pick LeBron, Shohei Otani, Connor McDavid, and Jude Bellingham all in the same entry. Download the app today and use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the prize picks app today and use code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. It's prize picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Welcome back to the Locked on Giants postcast. 
Giants tonight, 17 to one slaughter at the hands of the Arizona Diamondbacks, the defending National League champions. Still feels very weird to say that. I don't care how many times I say that. I don't think that will stop feeling weird. The defending National League champions, Arizona Diamondbacks. This one, not a lot of positives for your Giants. Nothing at the plate, not a lot to glean from on the mound. Uh, if you're watching the, uh, if you're listening to the KMBR broadcast, you heard uh, you heard Flem and, and John Miller talking about how they lost by 17 run or they they gave up 17 runs to the Dodgers at Oracle in 2014. And well, we all remember what happened in 2014. So maybe maybe this is an omen. It is an even year. Maybe it's an omen of some good things to come. I want to hold my breath on that, but but maybe it is. Maybe you know, it, and that's. If nothing else, like we're, we're screwing around, but if nothing else, that's a, it's indicative of how much or how little one of these games means in April or any time of the season. It's one out of 162. It does not matter a whole lot for you to sit there and, and sell the season based on this one loss. It's not smart. It's not smart. It's not rational. And I know that's not the popular take. Like, if 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 we were just going for hot takes on the show, this is the perfect opportunity to yell and scream and get mad and and try and get a viral clip of something. But that's just not like we're not going to force that. That's not how I do things. That's not how we're going to do things here on the Locked On Giants postcast. We are in it for the long haul. 162 games. I'm going to say it again. It's such a long season. You cannot judge a team based on one game. And I know that there's been a collective body of work. And if you want to start being concerned about this offense's lack of production, join the club because I am too. I think they'll figure it out, but they look so different without Jung Hu Lee at the top of their lineup. It, it puts so much pressure on this one piece to stay healthy and be a part of, I mean, in games when he's not playing, they look bad at the top of the order. Slater is not a leadoff hitter. He is not the guy you want at the top of this lineup. And without, without, Jung Hu Lee, there isn't really another clear leadoff hit, like maybe Lamont Wade. But I mean, do you really want him leading off? It's just not the best lineup. It's not full of, of guys like Jung Hu Lee. And I know they're growing those guys on trees, but his speed, his contact, the bat to ball skills change this whole lineup. Him setting the table at the top of this order changes the rest of this lineup. And I think that the fact that you are that thin kind of goes to reinforce what we were talking about a couple days ago, which is the Giants are probably going to need to trade for a bat at some point this season. But before the trade deadline, they're going to need to ship some of these arms that they have out. I mean, they have so many arms and, and you can't sell the whole farm or anything like that because one, you don't want to. And two, Blake Snell's only here for one year. So if you're counting on Blake Snell, uh, if you're pointing to him as a reason that you can go sell the farm because you got this guy, Pump the brakes on that because he's not here very much longer, or at least you hope he's gone after this year because he he has the one and one, the, the player option to come back next year. But if he performs at the level or close to what he did last year, this season, he's absolutely for sure going to get a bigger deal in free agency than that one year left that he would have with the Giants. So if you're a Giants fan and you want Blake Snell to, to, to contribute to this team, you're hoping he does, and he does well enough that he ends up leaving after this year. So you have a, you can't sell all of these arms in in the farm system. You can't sell Keaton Wynn and, and Mason Black and Carson Wisenhunt. You can't just go and clean house with all these guys to go back and get some super mega huge bat. You can't do that. You can't completely sell the future. This team is also not ready to go compete right now. This isn't a World Series or bust year, so you're not going to sell the farm and try and just get back to the playoffs. I think. All of us Giants fans want to see more than just a playoff appearance. We have higher expectations than just a, a, a trip to October. The Giants want to be coming home with some hardware. Giants fans want some more hardware. We see those three World Series trophies uh, walking around at Oracle Park, it, you know, right by right by the Lumpia. If you haven't had the Lumpia, you need to go get the Lumpia at Oracle Park. But anyways, you see those, those three World Series trophies in their case, in their home, they're getting a little a little lonely. I think they need a fourth one, but Giants probably going to have to wait several years for that to happen. I think they're still a couple years away. I don't think this team this year is ready to go and, and compete for a World Series like that. And, and no, that's not just because they lost 17-1 to tonight, but it's 
it, it, the body of work doesn't inspire a ton of confidence. It says this team is rebuilding and that they're moving in the right direction, but they are still in a rebuilding process. It's going to take some time for all of these pieces to start meshing, to start clicking. In baseball, more than any other sport, chemistry matters so much. Think about those Giants teams that won. 2010. I mean, Edgar Renteria, Cody Ross, like th these guys aren't Hall of Fame level players. They're huge bats. You don't think back to these guys and go, man, that guy just did constant 30 home run seasons. Like, no, that's not who these guys were. They won these World Series on their pitching, their defense. And a lot of that has to do with the camaraderie and chemistry that you have knowing what your pitcher's tendencies are as a defender, knowing where your defender, how your defenders like to field as a pitcher. All of these types of things that feel for each other come with time. The Giants have so many new pieces on this squad that it's going to take a little bit longer. It's not going to be an instant fix. It's not going to be, it's not like they went outside Solaire and Chapman. So we're, we're going to say, okay, all of a sudden this offense is a top 10 offense in baseball. It doesn't work like that. You need all of these other pieces to start coming together doesn't help that Michael Conforto is slumping. It doesn't help that half the lineup is slumping. It doesn't help that all of these guys have been trying to, to climb out of it at the same time. It makes this process tough. It makes it frustrating. It makes it <laughs> what we're all used to. Giants baseball torture. Back out there tomorrow, Harrison on the hill. The Giants going to try and get a win. That's about all the time that we got for you today here on the Locked on Giants postcast. We'll come at you live tomorrow following the conclusion of Giants Diamondbacks day game tomorrow. So make sure you get out early to the yard. If you're heading out, there should be a beautiful day in San Francisco. A beautiful day for 420. Shout out to all you 420ists out there if, uh, if you are celebrating. And if you're not, you know, shout out to you too. Love, love to everybody tonight who, who stuck through us or through this Giants misery on the Locked on Giants postcast with us today. Thanks so much for joining. I'm your host, Eric Triple E Ingle. We will see you next time. Peace.